call the budget review committee to order. It's December 28th, 2020. And this meeting is held via teleconference. As chairman of the budget review committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to the executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order and confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. To access Zoom, please refer to the agenda or the city's website for the meeting link. To join by phone, dial 1-929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 841-5386-1095. And the passcode is 190-910. The public may also view the meeting via channel 16. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through the public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashville's website at www.nashvillenh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Nashville Public Library. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance when each member states their presence. Please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting which is required under the right to know law. Alderman O'Brien, would you please call the roll? Alderman at large. Shoshana Kelly. I am here. I can hear everyone and my 15 month is in the room, but I don't think he's gonna do anything. Alderman Lodge, Michael O'Brien is present. I am alone and I can hear the proceedings. Alderman Lodge, Laurie Wilshire. Here, I'm alone and I can hear you. Alderman Ernest Jetty. I'm here, I'm alone, and I can hear the proceedings. Alderman Jan Schmidt. I am here, I'm alone, and I can hear everyone. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens. I am here, I am by myself, and I can hear everyone. And Alderman Richard A. Dowd, Chairman. Yes, I uh, can hear everyone. I am here alone, practicing social distancing. Mr. Chairman, okay. seven members present. We have a full complement and a majority. Okay, roll call. Uh, first item of business is public content, public comment rather, and anything related to tonight's agenda. Is there anyone that wishes to speak from the public? Not seeing or hear anyone. Next item is communications. There is none. Unfinished business. There is none. New business resolutions. Before us this evening is R-20-100 relative to the rescinding of authorized unissued debt. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion to recommend final passage by roll call. The motion is to recommend final passage of R-20-100 relative to the rescinding of authorized unissued debt. Uh, are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Mr. Chairman, seven yeas, zero nays. The motion carries. Next motion. 
Also before us is R-20-103, relative to the transfer of $250,000 from prior year escrow funds, department number 194 contingency, account number 70122, operating expense contingency, into the governor's office for emergency relief and recovery, uh, GOFA grant. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to recommend final passage by roll call. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R-20-103, relative to the transfer of $250,000 from prior year ESCO funds, department number 194, contingency account number 70122, operating expense contingency into the governor's office for emergency relief and recovery, go for a grant. Are there any questions or concerns relative to this? Uh, Alderman Wilshire. Can we get a little background what, what this is gonna be used for or what, what this is about? Okay, um, Ms. Kleiner, do you want to handle that? Or? So I think um, Alderman Dowd, um, my, between myself and uh, CFO Griffin, um, we can provide you some context. Um, right now, as it stands, um, we knew that with the city building renovation project, um, along with the major technology costs that the city incurred all due to COVID-19, that we would need a little bit of an additional funding. Um, right now it stands a little bit over $100,000. So at the time um, that we were preparing the escrows, we put this money aside um, Right now, it's a little over $100,000 of it that we have incurred, um, but there may be more depending if there is additional technology or any additional change orders on the city building renovation project. So this money was um, set aside specifically for this purpose, knowing that we would be incurring over the $2 million in GOFER funding. Does that answer your question, Alderman Wilshire? Um, sort of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kleiner. Any other questions relative to this? Yes, please, Elizabeth. Resolution? Yes. Alderman Liu? Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Um, so I just don't understand why we why it's a good idea to move the funds from one account into the gopher account. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Griffin, you want to address that? Yes, uh, John Griffin, CFO. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason why it's a good idea is uh, Administrative Dir Services Director Kleiner indicated the gopher grant fund if it doesn't get an infusion of cash can't pay for the additional expenses that were recognized. So what this does, we don't we don't spend out of a contingency account. So the objective of this particular piece of legislation is to move the contingency amounts, as described in the analysis portion of the legislation, into the Gopher Grant Fund. And to the extent the two hundred fifty thousand is not spent, such funds, any unused funds, will be transferred back to the prior year escrow account. So. Um, it, it seems likely that that uh, will incur additional costs for items that uh, Director Kleiner indicated, but the, the purpose of the transfer is so we can actually spend the money. Does that answer your question, Alderman Liu? Um, if I could just not quite, just a follow-up question. Follow-up. So am I understanding this correctly that um, in order to track the funds that we have spent that are um, that may be COVID, I'm sorry, uh, gopher uh, eligible, they need to come out of the same account or it just makes it easier if we spend all of our COVID related, uh, we do all our COVID related spending from one account. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, Mr. Griffin. Griffin CFO. 
That, that is, that is uh, one of the purposes of, of putting it in the Gopher grant fund, because as you recall, you approved the grant fund for the allocation amount from the state. We've incurred what would arguably be Gopher related uh, expenses and, and it'd be a good accounting practice to keep all of those uh, on the city side, all of those expenditures in one grant fund. Thank you. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Thank you. Um, I think this is for CFO Griffin. So my question is, if we're moving it back into the governor's grant fund, do we have our own account in Nashua or is it in the big pot? And how do we know what happens once it goes back into the big pot? Because the way it is worded makes it sound like we're just putting it back in the, the governor's office for emergency relief fund. Mr. Griffin. Good question, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Um, the purpose of moving the money into the grant fund is to capture all of the city related COVID-19 expenses into that one area. This would be considered a, a municipal contribution to that grant fund that you approved. So if you looked at it uh, practically, you'd have the 2.092 million uh, that came down and was accepted and appropriated uh, from the state. And this would be the city's municipal contribution to the, to the grant fund. And there's another piece of legislation to follow, but but that's the purpose of moving it into the grant fund. It's not going to the state. This is uh, local money, and it's considered a municipal contribution to the grant fund to capture all of the expenses related to this effort. Mr. Griffin, would it also be easier at some point if the state or go federal government, well, state allocate additional funds that we could uh, keep track of how much we've spent by using it in this one account? Yes, that, that would be helpful. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, any remaining funds that the uh, state received under the CARES Act uh, were, were divvied up to other programs other than the municipal and uh, town and municipal uh, city relief. Uh, any remaining funds, it's my understanding they're going to place those funds into the unemployment insurance fund. To the extent there's more coming, it, it would be a, a good placeholder if there's more uh, state and local government relief. So you're absolutely correct, Alderman Dowd. That would be, uh, we, we could have a phase two okay. uh, if, if we're so fortunate. Thank you. Any additional questions, Alderman Kelly? No, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? I have I, oh, I have another question, please. Alderman Lou. Thank you. Um, most of our um, so we're moving it. Most of our funds have numbers, uh, account numbers, but I noticed that the Gopher Fund doesn't have an account number, and so I'm I'm still not quite clear on. Is that a, is that sitting in Nash, you know, in this, the city account? Yeah. Uh, is that, is that sitting in the general fund or? That, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. the, the, the fund, the fund was set up and established. Um, it's, it's in the, it's in the city. Um, okay. I'm happy to report that we recovered, received uh, the full grant amount. Um, and it, but it is in the city and um, it, it does have a fund number. It's just not on this particular uh, page. Okay, thank you. And if I could just follow up with one more question. Sure. Why, um, why do we as a municipality, um, why do we need to make a contribution of 2.9 or rather um, this contribution? Uh, Mr. Chairman, another good question. Um, as you recall, back when we were fortunate to get the grant, there was kind of a, uh, a, a reach, uh, an outreach on the part of the mayor and his team to get what would be qualified expenses. And we, we were very close. Um, we didn't want to turn anybody away. All of these expenses that, that had been duly tracked 
would be recoverable from the Gopher Fund if we were able to get more funds. We weren't sure if we were going to get any funds, more funds, but this would be a, a, a proper and appropriate use of um, some escrow funds that we put aside uh, with, with the Board of Aldermen's approval. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Clements. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Okay. Alderman O'Brien. Yep. Next on the agenda is R-20-104. <clears throat> relative to the transfer of $998,132 from department number 150 police, account number 90530, expense transfer to grant funds into the governor's office for emergency relief and recovery, go for grant. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to recommend final passage. Okay, the motion is to recommend final passage of R-20-104 relative to the transfer of $998, yes, $9,998, let me try that again, $998,132 from department number 150 police account, number 9530, expense transfer to grant funds into the governor's office for emergency relief and recovery go for grant. Who would like to address this one? Uh, I could, uh, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Griffin. Warren Griffin, CFO. Um, I, I think it'd be uh, perfect to read some of the analysis into the record, so I will do so. Sure. This resolution authorizes the transfer of $998,132 from the police department's general fund operating budget into the governor's office of emergency relief and recovery go for fund grant. Due to the strict timelines associated with submitting expenses to GOFER for reimbursement and that GOFER would only reimburse in quotes paid expenses, public safety budgeted payroll was identified as a reimbursable expense. Thus the police payroll was submitted to ensure that the city received a full grant award in the amount of 2,992,948. This transfer is strictly a mechanism to move the reimbursed amount of $998,132 into the GOFER grant as a funding source to pay for COVID-19 remaining costs that were incumbent at the time of the city's final reimbursement request. So it's, it was kind of strange that in the middle of the summer, the folks that operated the GOFER grant reimbursement program notified us that we couldn't encumber funds that were gonna be prospectively paid, but rather they, they gave us kind of a lifeline, which was any public safety and public health expenses already budgeted could be recovered. So we quickly put together our, our fourth submittal and uh, I also had uh, some good discussions with the senior auditor for the Gopher grant. And uh, we were comforted that the amount that we submitted would have been approved and uh, which was done. Now, the reason for the transfer and, and why this will have zero effect on the police department's operating budget is account 9530 is at the very bottom of their reports, their financial statements. So we, with this action, we're going to credit expenses. So that's the credit side. And we're going to debit the go for grant fund, which is the expense side coming in. And we're going to essentially free up the 998132 to pay for the other duly noted grant, go for grant funds that would have been paid had we been able to go with the original plan 
of submitting projects that were COVID related and go for reimbursable. So it's a, it, it, it's a little bit odd that the federal government would allow budgeted items to be reimbursable under a grant program. But in this case, uh, it, it was a nationwide authorization that any public safety and public health expenditures to combat the COVID pandemic would be allowable. Furthermore, uh, Governor Sununu's team wanted to get the, all of the expenses paid duly, with, duly uh, noted with backup and, and submittals by October 30th so they could really get an assessment of how well the municipalities did in spending the CARES Act funding. So the purpose of this particular legislation is to increase the GOFER grant fund in the city by 998,132 so we can pay for the things that administrative services director Kleiner already mentioned and has mentioned in the past at various finance committee meetings. Thank you. So it's, it's basically to do the proper accounting of our funds to ensure that we receive the maximum benefit from um, what the state is allowing in gopher funds. Correct. Any questions? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clemens? Yes. Alderman Schmidt? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. And Alderman Dowd. Yes, motion carries. Next order of business is our, I mean, O20, oh, I'm sorry, new business ordinances. Alderman yes, O'Brien? <laughs> yes, before us this evening is O-20-042, amending the ordinance of maintaining adequate unassigned general fund balance. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion to recommend final passage by roll call. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage to the full board of 020042, amending the ordinance of maintaining adequate unassigned general fund balance. Alderman Jetty, did, is this the one you had something on? Yes. Um, so I, I, I expected that uh, uh, CFO Griffin would, would speak to uh, why are we doing this? But you know, my mem my memory is that uh, when this came up, it, uh, you know, our ordinance requires that the mayor submit to the board of aldermen, um, you know, a statement that we are maintaining the proper amount of uh, uh, reserved funds. Um, and the the ordinance uh, defined that uh, to include. Uh, you know, the, the, the denominator had to include the uh, uh, statewide enhanced uh, education amount, the local school uh, amount, and the uh, county appropriation. Yeah, I was just referring to you wanted to make a word change. I was going to have him explain it, but. Okay. Um, uh, you want to make that one change before we start talking about it? I, I certainly can. So the, um, I noticed that um, as the ordinance was uh, drafted, there seemed to be an extra um, use of the word each uh, in it, uh, which um, you know, I'm, I'm moving to uh, strike that, that first each that appears uh, modifying June 30th. Um, so that it would um, it would now read um, it is the policy of the board of aldermen to maintain an unassigned general fund um, balance as of June thirtieth of each year, equal to a minimum of ten percent of the of the municipality's fiscal year general fund appropriations. So it just eliminates that extra 
what I thought was a, a superfluous uh, use of the word each. Um, so my motion is just to strike that, that extra each. So your motion is to amend 020-042 to um, scratch the first word each in paragraph 5, 135A, second sentence. That's correct. Okay. Are there any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Ottoman Clement. Yes. Ottoman Schmidt. Yes. Ottoman Jetty. Yes. Ottoman Wilshire. Yes. Ottoman O'Brien votes yes. Ottoman Kelly. Yes. Ottoman Dowd. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays. Okay, the motion carries. So now we have an amended 020. 042 and Mr. Griffin, would you like to provide additional information? I know Olive and Jetty covered start to cover pretty well, but yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. John Griffin, CFO. Um, this this particular ordinance uh, is is very good news for us uh, in the financial division. Um, it it basically codifies what we've been doing for probably several decades. And it really puts the savings account, the unassigned fund balance of the city as a simple um, calculation of the current year adopted general fund appropriations. Um, we've done very well in the past. The, the ordinance is a 10% minimum. We're generally in the middle 11.4, 11 11.5, 11 11.6. But it, 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 it's a simple calculation that would accompany the mayor's notification of surplus and overlay and allows uh, the Board of Aldermen to have a good, good handle on the unassigned fund balance when they make the decision of how much of surplus they would appropriate again or they would apply to the tax rate. When, when we mention things like statewide enhanced education amount, local school tax amount, that, that's in the budget. A lot of cities and a lot of towns in New Hampshire, they, they have separate school districts. So in my understanding of, of why these items are here that we don't really talk about, those two items in particular, one is kind of a revenue enhanced, uh, I mean, um, uh, the enhanced education amount, but but the only thing that is not appropriated is the county appropriation, which is 11 million. So when we look at uh, the most recent adopted budget of 282.9 million, we're, we're, we're very well covered with a, uh, a an unassigned fund balance of almost 31 million. And the calculation is easy to understand, but that's my, research and review of certain documents that the DRA calculates. And uh, this, pro this provide, actually provides more protection for the city as a percentage than the former calculation. I'm not sure why they never used the former calculation, but as I mentioned back in September, um, I inherited it from Mr. Gilbar who inherited it from Ms. Anderson. And it served us well. It's, it's very well understood by the rating agencies. They, they approve, uh, they look at that number every year when we have our bond rating calls. And they like to see that unassigned fund balance grow a bit to, to maintain that 11.4, 11.5% calculation. So hopefully that explains why we're trying to do this at this point. I think it makes perfect sense and I would I would appreciate uh, an approval or a recommendation for approval. Thank you. Anyone? Uh, Alderman Clements. Thank you. Um, well, I know former former Alderman uh, T. Boom will be very happy to hear this um, because I know <laughs> he's, been, he's been on us about this for for a while now. Um, so it's good that it's coming forward because basically it's just putting a best practice uh, into writing in our in our ordinances. And even he himself said, you know, um, that 
that we should do this. Um, so I, and I, and I agree because this is the, this is the practice that we do. This is the practice that gets us the AAA bond rating um, in part. And uh, so, you know, I'm behind it a hundred percent. So thank you. Anyone else questions or comments? Yes, I have a question, please. Alderman Lou. Thank you, um, Chairman Dowd. Um, could you just um, help me understand whether, um, let's see, the enhanced education amount, and I apologize, um, Mr. Director Griffin, you did send me um, some information about this today, but it, I had a few more questions still. Um, the, in, the statewide enhanced education amount, is this, some, is this something that we need to budget for or is this something that we receive from the state or neither? Well, I mean, Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you. And a uh, very good question. It, it's it's kind of why I think we went with this approach a decades, decades ago. But it's part, if you think about it, it's part of the budget. It's part of the school budget that they send over um, that you, you as aldermen approve uh, as far as the final adopted budget. It's not an extra amount. Um, it's it's It probably makes a lot of sense uh, to have such a calculation in districts that don't have their school system as part of their total budget. I see. That's, 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 the, that's kind of the, what I found out. Okay. It's hard to even understand what it is, but it's something that's part of the DRA forms and they do it for every, every town in New Hampshire. Okay, thank you. And just a follow up, please. Alderman Lou. Thank you. And the local school net tax commitment is the portion of our city uh, property taxes that um, are sent up to the state, correct? Which may be then distributed back to us. Yeah, they, they calculate it, but we keep it. We, I mean, we, I, uh, okay. It's a, it's a number that's part of the tax rate. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Well said. Yes. Anyone else? Any other questions? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. And Alderman Dowd. Yes. Mr. Chairman, seven yeas, zero nays. And the motion carries. Okay, uh, we have some items that were tabled in committee. Um, and one of them is uh, relative to the supplemental appropriation of $50,000 to fund a feasibility study for future reuse of Elm Street Middle School building. Uh, I'd like a, yeah, a motion to indefinitely postpone um, R-2017 because Mr. Cummings was able to get the funds uh, uh, from a different source, so he does not need this resolution. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, Chairman, you'd table. have to take that off the table first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. Motion to take it off the table. Mr. Chairman, can I make the motion to take R-20-17 uh, off the table by roll call? Okay, the motion is to take R-20-017 off the table by roll call. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Clement. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. And Alderman Dowd. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays. Okay. Our 2017 is off the table. Would I, I'd be now be accepting a motion indefinitely postponed. Alderman Wilshire. I'll make a motion to indefinitely postpone resolution 20-17. Okay, any questions or concerns? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? 
Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. That motion Seven passed. yeas, zero nays. And there are no others that I've been advised by anyone that they want taken from the table. So uh, next item of business is general discussions. Is there anyone that wants to speak on any subject? Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I do have one question. When we voted for R-2100, we did take care of uh, some of the other line items that needed the correction in doing so. We, if the, according, uh, according to our uh, uh, treasurer for that uh, email sent to us. Uh, he's saying no. I'll, they, uh, yes, Treasurer Fredette. Sorry to cause a little extra work, but it went by so fast. I missed this. I In my email to you all, there were two line items and the resolution itself that should be um, amended because it's a both type, they're typos, but they should be changed. And I forgot to mention that to you at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Um, Alden Wilshire, would you just prefer that we address those when it comes to the full board? Or we could, do that. We, could we could either, yeah, we can do that. We have to do that anyway, technically. Yeah, because it'd be kind of hard going back and yeah, I missed that too when I went by it. <laughs> After having all that conversation. I'm sure everybody understood it because of the great explanation you gave, Treasurer, for that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Uh, but we'll address those those uh, typos uh, in, a, in an amendment at the full board meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other general discussion? All of the will share? Um, I'd like to thank uh, John Griffin and Dave Fredette for all their help and uh, Director Kleiner for all their help on all this stuff, and getting things cleaned up and in order. So thank you all for that. Yeah, I knew there'd be questions based on the legislations tonight, so I wanted to make sure that uh, we had as much information out ahead as possible so people would have a better understanding of it. And, and uh, that was a good memo, Treasurer Fidette. And I know that uh, uh, Ms. Kleiner and John Griffin uh, provided great information to people. So any other general discussion? I had a couple of questions, if I could. All right. Alderman Lou. Thank you, Chairman Dowd. It just has, um, ordinance number 20042 is still kind of, uh, I'm still thinking about it. Was our um, school system ever, uh, have we always been, um, sorry, part of the city's budget? Has the school system always, I'm trying to think of why the aldermen back in 2008 would have made that change. It has, as far as I know, for the past 30 years. Okay, thank Anybody you. Anybody go back farther than that? <laughs> thank you. Unless huh. anybody stepping up to that plate. It goes back to the city charter, 1853. Yeah. I don't go back oh, that far. Huh. And, <laughs> The second question I had, just, um, I think I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, of, of state law that, that's confusing because the majority of, of municipalities in New Hampshire are towns and their school boards, their school budget and school board is totally separate from the town budget. It's only the cities that have it as part of their city budget. Um, and it's not the only legislation. There are a lot of them. Alderman Clements? Yeah, I was just about to say, actually, Nashua, I think, is unique amongst all municipalities in New Hampshire, the way that we appropriate our budgets. Um, so it's it's sort of just a, um, an old practice that... Um, never changed because our charter never changed 
So the basically the state accepts our charter and that's how we run our corporation, which is the city. You know, some of the other cities are a little bit, they're not necessarily like us, but they are unique from towns like Manchester with a, anyway, any, anyone else? No, public comment. Is there anyone, any members of the public that we wish to comment? Seeing and hearing no one remarks by Alderman. Seeing no one, we do not need a non-public. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn by roll call. Motion is to adjourn by roll call. Please call the roll. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Alderman O'Brien votes yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Seven right. yeas, zero nays. Everyone stay safe and healthy for the rest of this year. And uh, hopefully we have a better 2021.